we are going to discover how to differentiate under the integral sign. Now we'll learn how to do that. We'll also learn why it's important. And if I have time at the end, I'll show you why it works. Okay, this idea is known as um, Leibniz rule. Okay, so sometimes in applied mathematics, we come across a function that's defined as an integral. And in particular, sometimes these integral type functions can't be expressed in terms of so-called elementary functions. So if you look at that um, integral from 0 to x of e to the minus u squared du, that can't be integrated. e to the minus u squared cannot be integrated in terms of so-called elementary functions. Okay, I mean, you can expand e to the minus u squared as a power series and then integrate term by term, but um, uh, we would not call this so, a so-called elementary function. Okay? Now, it turns out that these kinds of um, integral type functions occur so often that we actually define them as standard functions of x. So... Here's a function that you may have come across called the error function. Anyone seen that before? C heard of the error function? Anyone? Yes? Well, that's used in lots of um, different places. In particular, this um, uh, form here is used in solving certain partial differential equations um, involving diffusion. Now, another important function defined by an integral is the so-called Laplace transform. So, suppose I've got a function, a little f of t, satisfying certain conditions. What the Laplace transform does is it takes your little f, it multiplies by this exponential function, and then you integrate over this half line with respect to t. Okay, so there's two kinds of notation, sort of this curly L of f of t and this big F of s. Now, you can see in, in this integral, t is the dummy variable, but what happens with this s? Well, the s doesn't change. Uh, well, I guess it, it doesn't disappear if you, can, if you can do this integral. So actually, that boxed, um, expression is a function of s, a function of s. We'll look at this um, a little later in the semester, these Laplace transforms. So what we're going to do today is learn how to differentiate functions that are defined via integrals. And the method is known as Leibniz rule. The, the question is, why would you want to do that? Well, I can think of two, two reasons for us to motivate our study in this area. Firstly, um, if a function defined by, you know, through some sort of integral is useful for modelling purposes, for example, solving PDEs or something like this, then it would seem to make sense that the derivative would also give us insight into the problem under consideration. And secondly... Leibniz rule, as we'll see, can be applied to evaluate very challenging integrals. So it's a little bit of a strange situation where, uh, as we'll see, you're actually using differentiation to integrate something. But I'll show you what I mean as we go along. Okay. This is the most basic version of Leibniz rule. Here's a picture of Leibniz. As you may know, one of the um, um, early contributors and instigators of calculus. Okay, well, 
If A and B are constants and some function, say of two variables, and its partial derivative with respect to the x variable in this case, are continuous on some rectangle like this, then if I have a function I defined by this integral here, then the derivative, all I really do is I push the ddx inside the integral sign and change the, the straight d's to curly d's. Okay, so in the subscript notation, this, this would just be the following. Okay? So remember here, the t is, is the, the variable that we're integrating over, and the x, well, the x is, is the independent variable. Now, some of you may have the x and the t switched around in your notes, okay? I've just put, I've just sort of, I reposted something, I think, yesterday or the day before, where it's not x comma t in your f, it's t comma x, just to keep it alphabetical. Okay, now I'll come back and prove that at the end if I have time. The proof isn't, isn't too um, difficult. So let's look at how we can use this uh, Leibniz rule for differentiating an integral. This one's a real basic um, um, example. Here we've got a function of x defined in this way. Calculate the derivative. Now, it would be tempting to try to integrate cosine tx over t with respect to t. But how are you going to do it? How are you going to do that? Imagine x is a constant in the integrand. What's the antiderivative of cosine tx over t? Well, so what we're going to do is just show how we can calculate derivative using this. And the, the method for this basic um, case is the following. So I'm differentiating. Let me just put this in brackets. Now the method, of course, you just move the ddx inside the integral sign and change it to a partial. Okay, that's like the, the, the computation, right? It's very, very simple. Oops, very simple, but I can't do it. Okay, so you move this inside and change it to a partial. Now, why do I need to change it to a partial derivative? Because this is a function of two variables, right? Okay, so it doesn't make sense to have just ddx there. Okay, so here I've just used Leibniz rule 1. L1. Okay, so let's compute that partial derivative and then see where that takes us. Okay, so I want to compute the partial derivative of this with respect to x. So I hold t constant, right, and differentiate with respect to x. So cosine is going to go to negative sine and that t is going to come to the front. Okay, so now I can cancel those t's off and I do know the integral of sine of tx with respect to t. Okay, imagine x is constant and integrate with respect to t. Okay, so I can integrate this now because these things have cancelled off, which is really nice. So let's integrate minus sine tx with respect to t, holding x constant. So I'm going to get a cosine tx, almost like what I started with. And I'm integrating with respect to t, so I'm going to divide by x. Okay, so... Let's just plug in for t equals 2 and t equals 1 in the usual way. 
So that I'll, I'll get two uh, cos two x. I'll put it in brackets just for completeness. And cos one x. Okay. So very similar for a lot of these kinds of questions. You just push that ddx or dd whatever inside the integral sign and change it to a partial. Hopefully, when you take the partial derivative, the situation simplifies. You can see we've got some cancellation um, in, in the uh, third bottom line, and that enabled us to actually perform the integral.